Kerala 2023 is uh, in full swing here in Istanbul. I'm in conversation with Adnan Kazan, the CCO of Emirates. Adnan, we, play, take a, we are appreciative of uh, you taking out the time and joining us here on CNN News 18. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, the last couple of years haven't been easy for the aviation space at large. I want to understand, are we out of the woods as far as the pandemic is concerned? How is the recovery looking like? I mean, the way things are looking like is quite positive. Uh, we have really, for the last one year, things are shaping up quite well. Uh, many of the capacity that we have lifted behind, many of the aircraft that were sitting on ground, they're back to operation. Uh, demand is shaping quite strongly. Uh, today, we're sitting roughly around 87% um, of pre-pandemic uh, capacity that we have managed to recover. All our 777 are operating. Almost we have 85 of the 380 of the fleet of Emirates uh, recovered. By summer, we should be sitting at 90% pre-pandemic in terms of the, the, the capacity recovery post-pandemic. Uh, um, in terms of the booking, things are really shaping up quite positively. Even we have exceeded the pre-pandemic 2019 in terms of the booking for summer in terms of the forecast when the capacity is still 10% below that level, which definitely will, will be quite a hot summer, I think, in terms of the demand, the way things have shaped up. We have managed to recover 140 destinations uh, of EK that we had pre-pandemic. Um, so really, I mean, things are, couldn't be any better. And what we have achieved in our results that we announced uh, back in May, uh, it's a proof of uh, how things were quite strong for us with yeah. uh, almost 119 billion dirham uh, of uh, revenue that sure. we generated, a profit yeah. of uh, close to $3 billion, which is quite strong, I think, uh, impact we uh, the whole thing sure. we made, I think, uh, which is positive. And then I want to talk to you specifically as far as India as a market is concerned. I want to understand what are your expansion plans. There are also reports suggesting that Emirates could be in talks as far as a code sharing with an Indian airline is concerned. Would you want to comment? India as a market, as we all know, is quite a strong market. We're talking about 1.5 billion population. Today, the, the, the sector which has been served for international is quite uh, limited, uh, not exceeding 70 million uh, passengers. Uh, India can offer much more than currently is offering for sure. Uh, as you are aware, we're quite restricted as far as the bilateral is concerned. Yeah. The last increase we got was back in 2015. Since then, we haven't got an increase. So I do, cannot talk about any further expansion in India under the current constraint or restriction that we have in place. Um, so, but today, we're holding quite a um, good position in India as far as the, the number of frequency that we're operating with 171 uh, flights per week. Yeah. But definitely, as the market growing, as population is growing, as more people would wanting to travel abroad, the Indians are all over the places in yeah. the world. Uh, more than 3.6 million or 8 million in, in UAE yeah. alone. Definitely, airlines always play that vital role to linking the two countries together sure. from all the sectors, uh, yeah. whether you, you talk about tourists or, sure. or economic sector or any sort of uh, bridging that mm. you require. This is quite vital. Uh, and the relationship between the two countries is really sitting at a very strategic level. Yeah. So the expectation always is high yeah. that we need to do more and more things should come in. Uh, and one single airline cannot do alone. Definitely, we need so, to look at so many other... I'm taking on from what you're saying, because the relationship between both the countries is at a strategic level. As you rightly pointed out, the Indian government has frozen any extension of rights as far as flying into the Middle East is concerned. Who do you think is losing here, and what would you appeal to the Indian government? Well, I cannot call it losing, but I would say that uh, it's a missed opportunity. It's missed... Uh, uh, creating the right flow, smooth flow, seamlessly for people to mobilize and travel. And aviation always played that role, whether between uh, east or west, or even, I mean, the, the whole world yeah. is shaping up because of aviation. Uh, yeah. You need to have a freedom of people flying easily. Definitely, if that's something that will come in, in the future, will definitely will add value, add mm. value to the consumer, mm. to be able to travel, for goods to, to be able to mobilize much easier and to get things, uh, get closer to each other. That's what we believe in it, but again, this is not our call to be made. Yeah. This is back to the 
Indian government to see it when, it when it's appropriate, I think, to make that call. And then two other issues that I want to discuss with you. One, of course, is this role of artificial intelligence as far as aviation is concerned. There is a lot of interest around yeah. it. How do you see the role of uh, artificial intelligence going forward? I mean, technology, AI, all these kind of, I mean, platform definitely will play a vital role. We're using it quite intensively today when it comes to forecasting, to revenue optimization. There are so many domains within the company that we're using the data in a yeah. right personalization way. Uh, you need these kind of, I mean, AIs to drive these things. Uh, but definitely it's shaping up even our airports. The way airport is shaping up uh, to make it more seamless, paperless, you need an AI. You need the videos to recognize yeah. faces so that you, you go through the, from the check-in to departure without yeah. having even uh, a paper, I mean, or a boarding pass that yeah. used to be traditionally or even go through the immigration for the passport. These are the evolution that's coming in yeah. and AI definitely will play, play that vital role to, to drive these changes for us in the future. And then, uh, you know, because we're talking about net zero, we're talking about being climate conscious, what is the role of airlines? And I'm talking to you specifically from the perspective of Emirates, your partnership with Desta. What does it mean for passengers? What does it mean for flights going forward? We're trying our best in terms of what we have within our domain to, to do the changes whether that to do with the recycling items on board or to do with using recycling uh, or try to use the plastic uh, free sort of as much as we can uh, on the way we conduct the business or using the solars uh, on our headquarters. There are certain domains that we have maybe certain control over it, but when it comes to SAF and using the fuel, uh, uh, sustainable fuel in the future, you need to have uh, many stakeholders to be playing that role as well. Uh, whether to do with uh, uh, the fuel suppliers yeah. or the government dictating some of these kind of items or even you need to have uh, airline uh, aircraft yeah. manufacturers like Airbus, Boeing and so many others to be collectively working yeah. uh, as a team to drive the changes. Uh, so far we have seen a quite a positive uh, momentum is going on, yeah. but we need to do more. Uh, okay. Today still is not commercially available the SAF. But, and that's something I think that we need to be paving the way until we get into 2050 uh, for the net zero uh, target that's been set in by IATA. Okay, perfect. And that has been a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much for taking out the time and joining Thank us. Thank you very much. Thank you.